Hey friends, hope you're enjoying your weekend. We are this close to CES and it's just not feasible for us to get there in person because of the cost of traveling from South Africa. Plus it was my anniversary yesterday, celebrated nine years with my wife. I would have had to have left before that in order to get to Las Vegas in time. Money, time traveling, and the fact that I traveled like close to 30,000 miles last year, not actually going to CES this year, but we're gonna do our remote coverage again, like we did last year. So hopefully you stick around for that. But in today's video, what I wanna discuss is everything that we're kind of expecting to come out from NVIDIA at CES in like about 30-ish hours is when they're supposed to have their keynote live stream. It's gonna be on Sunday, January 6th at 8 p.m. Las Vegas time, which is gonna be 6 a.m. here in South Africa. I will be live streaming their live stream. So if you guys are interested in that, check the channel and you guys can live chat with me, just like we did with the RTX 20 series announcement. But let's go ahead and talk about what we're gonna expect at CES because Gamescom is a while ago. So we have new things to look forward to. And the primary thing that we are looking forward to is the RTX. 2060. We've done a lot of videos about the supposed leaks and everything that has come out, and we have some of the more promising leaks that have come out in the past few weeks, and I want to go through them with you and what we can expect from this 2060. It appears that it should be about $350. Earlier rumors said $400, but that $50 price cut actually makes it pretty acceptable in my book, especially when we look at the fact that not only did this leak come with the pricing and all of the things that we need to know, like how many CUDA cores it has, what's the clock speed going to be like, how many you know pins do you need to plug it in, but also we've got benchmarks. We have 1080p benchmarks, we have 1440p benchmarks, and we have pictures of the card. And when you compare the 2060 to the previous 10 series generation, it looks like it's right below a 1070 Ti in some games and just tied with a 1070 Ti in other games. And for the price point of $350, that's welcome. It's not the huge price cut that we're looking for. Just two weeks ago, I did a build video where uh, the a 1070 Ti was going for $370. So it's a $20 price cut for about the same performance. However, the thing that we should be anticipating here is that it also comes with ray tracing. So you're getting an additional feature for the same performance as a 1070 Ti for slightly less. This is actually the budget card that we kind of want. It's not as cheap as it should be. $300 would make us feel much better about the situation. But a $350 RTX 2060 that performs on par with the 1070 Ti in most games and then has ray tracing on top of that and deep learning super sampling is, is something that I could see actual people upgrading to. It's not that far off from the price of a normal 1060. Current 1060s on sale, not withholding. Original price of a 1060, since that sold for $300. And in case you're not convinced that the 2060 is actually launching, we do have pictures, again, of the Founders Edition, as you can see right here. And then we also have pictures of a iGame version in the retail box, and then also some Zotac models pictured as well from their sales samples. So it looks like they're going to be announced tomorrow, January 6th, at CES. And then according to other leaks from video cards, they should be on sale as early as January 15th. So with the following Tuesday, not the following Tuesday, a week after, the 15th, you know, it's it's gonna be a little bit until they, they get the cards out. So it's not looking like it's going to be a paper launch. We obviously don't know how many they're gonna have in stock. It could be like the, the earlier version of the 20 series where everything was out of stock for a while because Nvidia just couldn't keep up, or they might actually be prepared for this more mid-range card that they're trying to sell. But one of the questions that I can hear you guys yelling at me through the screen is, Brett, ray tracing's not gonna work. The 2070 can't even ray trace in Battlefield 5. That's true. But that also means that we're getting another announcement that's been hinted at through some of these leaks, which is kind of interesting. So you can see in the benchmarks for the 2060 in Battlefield 5 with ray tracing off, it got 110 FPS. You put it on medium, it's got 66. And then if you have ray tracing ultra, it's 58. Not even 60 FPS at 1080p. It's not great, but the leak that we're getting here is that not only is Battlefield 5 going to have ray tracing, but it appears that deep learning super sampling is coming to the game as well. And I don't believe it was one of the official titles that was announced that it was supposed to have it, but with how strongly, uh, frustratingly it's been implemented, adding deep learning super sampling to lower the rendered resolution and then upscale it with the tensor cores makes sense to lessen the performance load and hopefully get more frame rates. So with deep learning super 
sampling on, it looks like we should be able to hit 88 FPS. That looks like it's the ray tracing medium version. So 1080p, 90 FPS with ray tracing on and deep learning super sampling could be a pretty decent combo. So far, the only other game that has deep learning super sampling is Final Fantasy 15. And if you look at the side-by-side -side images that other people have done, as far as most of the time, you can't tell a difference between native 4K and then deep learning super sampling upscaled 4K from 1440p. So it appears that it's doing its job properly. There are some bugs and tweaks that have to be worked out, like flickering lines on some gates and power lines. But if none of those plague the Battlefield 5 implementation, we actually might get a pretty decent game to run on your RTX 2060. But obviously, the Battlefield 5 has been out for a while. We're really looking forward to Metro Exodus and seeing what that brings to the table in mid of February. So that's gonna be pretty exciting. And I just wanna remind you that, yes, we're supposed to be getting the RTX 2060, and the one that I've been talking about thus far is the six gig version with GDDR6. If you remember, we did a video like a week ago where it was revealed that Gigabyte has filed for over six different versions of RTX 2060s. Two six gig models, two four gig models, and two three gig models with them having GDDR5 or 5X and GDDR6. So two different memory types, three different RAM amounts, and a whole lot of nonsense and variety. There's been no leaks on the performance of any of the lesser cards with the lesser amount of VRAM. It is anticipated that they're going to have slower performance just like the 1063 gig did. So it could be that the RTX 2063 gig could go for somewhere around $250 and then the RTX 2064 gig would go for somewhere around $300 so that Nvidia gobbles up all of that pricing dimension between 250 and 350 and you get ray tracing with deep learning super sampling at an affordable frame rate and then kind of knocks AMD's RX 590 out of the water as far as that pricing structure. Again, that one's speculation hasn't really been confirmed. Only the 2066 gig has been confirmed with GDDR6, so we'll have to see what's going on. But then there's other rumors that also kind of give us pause as to what actually is happening. And this one coming out from mid, uh, mid to late December talking about how an 1160 might actually still come out with it being the 1060 either rebadged or being the 2060 without uh, ray tracing cores or tensor cores, but just being a normal CUDA core version of the Turing process. Architecture is what I meant to say. So video cards got an image of a six, 1660 Ti and they somehow reasoned it out that would be the 1160 even though it says 1660. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. But yeah, it doesn't have ray tracing supposedly. Uh, there has been slightly more confirmation than just some weird image. And that was from Lenovo in a laptop promotion, citing that their GTX 1160 was going to be in their laptops with both three and six gig. This could be a rebadge of the mobile series. So this wouldn't have the RT cores. This wouldn't have the tensor cores. It would come in at a lower price point than the RTX 2060. I'm, a, I'm more okay with them rebadging the mobile 10 series than I am with them rebadging the desktop 10 series because that's been sold forever. The mobile 10 series, if it comes in cheaper, if they call it the 1160, but it's really the 1060, that's totally fine with me. I have no problem if, if an 1160 is a laptop card exclusively. That makes me happy, especially since the 8 series was also a laptop exclusive. Just kind of works for me. Again, we don't know if this is actually happening. Highly anticipate the 20 series. 11 series is a little iffy. And that also stands true for the 2050. There has been some rumor that it's going to be announced at CES as well, but there hasn't been as many leaks in terms of pictures or performance or anything that's coming along with the 2060, but it looks like we could expect 896 CUDA cores, 56 texture units. We're not sure if it's gonna have any ray tracing elements, which is why, uh, at least on Tom's hardware, they're calling it the GTX 2050, because if it doesn't have tensor cores or ray tracing cores, then it's not an RT card proper, which I, get, I will have to see if this is actually going to happen. Um, but yeah, the, the 2050, the 1150, totally possible. Even on mobile, we could see that coming out. And then again, that would be somewhere in the $150 to $200 price range, if I had to guess. And then not exclusive to NVIDIA, but it is their technology. We are expecting, this isn't from their keynote, but we are expecting that certain models of the 2080 Ti are going to get announced, which should make a few people happy. Like Tank, he loved the 1080 Ti Lightning. It looks like there has been a picture of the 2080 Ti Lightning that has been put out on the internet. 
And if you look at it, it looks like it was prepared for some extreme overclocking. And according to the reports that I saw, it hit 2,450 megahertz. So it's going super fast. It looks super sleek under the shroud. That's a gorgeous looking PCB. It makes me happy. I'm sure it's gonna make you happy if you guys see it. Yeah, and it showed up on an HW bot submission, but then was subsequently deleted, probably because it's still under NDA. And then lastly, we are expecting an announcement of all of the new mobile versions of NVIDIA's GPUs, the 2080, the 2070, and the 2060 mobile varieties, as well as Max-Q. And if I need to remind you, Max-Q is the version of the GPU that takes less energy, it's more power efficient, and therefore can hit better thermal limitations. And so you get a 2070 Max-Q. It's not actually a 2070 performance. It's more like a super clocked 2060. So we should get six different new graphics cards, 2060, 2070, 2080, and then the MXM varieties, with the 2060 hitting about a 1070, 1070 Ti in laptop performance. The 2070 mobile should hit about a 1080 Ti in mobile performance, and then the 2080 should hit about a 1080 Ti mobile performance, and then cost a whole heck of a lot of money. But it's pretty good since, considering we've never really had a 1080 Ti level graphics card in a laptop before, Turing might actually be able to bring that to us if you can afford it. There has been some leaked performance of the 2070 Max-Q. It looks like it's better than a 1080 and an RX Vega at one game from Final Fantasy 15. That's all the benchmarks that we have, but we're this close to finding out more, and I'm sure NVIDIA is gonna toot their own horn about that, because prior to them talking about ray tracing, like at Computex, one of their biggest selling points was the Max-Q variety of their notebooks. So I would anticipate that Jensen is gonna hit this one pretty dang hard during his keynote, even though most people probably aren't gonna ever have a 2080 mobile version in their laptop, because it's just too gosh dang expensive. So that's what we're expecting from NVIDIA this year. Let me know if I missed anything that you guys are excited for. Let me know what you're most excited for down in the comments. I think the 2060 probably won't be as disappointing as I was thinking it was going to be. If it comes in at $350, if they stick to that price point, even for the Founders Edition, then I'll be a happy camper. That's probably gonna be a decent buy for a lot of people. Also, I just wanna let you know, if you guys wanna support UFD Tech directly, you can do so at our Patreon. I'll leave a link for that at the video description, patreon.com forward slash UFD Tech. We try to release all of our videos as early as possible on that platform, as well as making sure that they're ad free there so you don't have to watch through any of the ads that we put in our videos. And who knows, if enough of you guys sign up, we might be able to afford the you know, $6,000 it would cost to get two of us to CES next year. Yeah, that's why we go to Computex. It's massively cheaper. Anyways, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Please get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. Don't forget that we will be live streaming NVIDIA's live stream in just about 30 hours. And yeah, that's it. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too.